And uh, I, so I wanted to get our old friend Stephen Larson uh, back on. Uh, he is the author of numerous books, including The uh, Healing Power of Neurofeedback, The Neurofeedback Solution, The Shaman's Doorway, Fire in the Mind, The Life of Joseph Campbell, Emanuel Swedenborg, Universal Human and Soul Body Interaction, The Mythic Imagination, uh, The Fundamentalist Mind, How Polarized Thinking Imperils Us All, The Fashioning of Angels, all kinds of stuff. Uh, a, a psychologist at the Stone Mountain Counseling Center and the founder of the Center for Symbolic Studies, StoneMountainCenter.com is the website. Stephen, welcome back to the, uh, to the program. Thank you, Tom. The only uh, one you missed was the last book, The Transformational Power of Dreaming. You should have gotten your copy by now. I did! Thank you, Stephen. And, and yes, you're absolutely right. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to reading that over the holiday season here. So, um, you know, we, every year we talk with you about this, and every year we add new listeners and viewers, and so a lot of people haven't heard this story, and others who have might have forgotten pieces of it. But let's talk about where Santa Claus came from. Yes. Um, I, I have been saying to my clients, actually I was in the midst of telling the story to my clients. I'm on, on clinical duty today, so I'm seeing patient or client after client. And what I was saying is I'm tired of the dichotomy of Merry Christmas versus Happy Hanukkah. So what I've been saying is glad Yule, because Yule is the oldest seasonal festival in the world, and I will qualify that by telling the story of it. Okay, cool. Go for it. Okay, so uh, if you look at the traditional iconography of Christmas, it is associated with the winter solstice, the shortest day and the longest night of the year. I said it to myself as I looked out at a gloomy East Coast morning. Uh, and I noticed the light was really pretty wimpy right now, uh, and there's fog everywhere. It's been raining, raining, raining all the time. I guess all the rain that was due to go to California uh, came here. Yeah, I think in 15 minutes we are at the shortest, we're at the solstice. It's the shortest moment of the shortest day of the year or something like that. Yeah, that's it, and I, I noticed before I even cognitively thought of the, uh, that fact I noticed it's awfully dark out there right now. Uh, so it is the shortest uh, day in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, and uh, after this, it gets lighter. And uh, so anyway, back to the iconography of Christmas. You know, it, it was in the Christian era, of course, that they grabbed the old pagan, actually shamanic holiday, uh, the Yule holiday, which is associated with non-Christian iconography. If you think about flying reindeer and jolly old elves and uh, the North Pole, it doesn't seem to have much to do with the gospel story of Christianity, does it? No. Uh, so people are confused about that. And why is there a tree in the center of almost every living room in the northern hemisphere. So the story goes back probably into um, long into prehistory. And at this time, in addition to the light waning, people in old times used to build bonfires or put candle on tr candles on trees to their own detriment because they would sometimes burn the place down if they had living candles instead of electronic candles like we have. But this tree is also called in the uh, Siberian language Yggdrasil, uh, and it's the cosmic tree. It's the, uh, it's the replacement, in a sense, for the North Pole around which everything circulates. <laughs> and the pole star, which happens to be also called the North Star, Polaris, doesn't move in the sky. Everything else rotates around it. And so the North Pole, more or less, points to the North Star. And if you look at uh, Mercia Eliada's great book on shamanism, you need to have a kind of an axis to the world. And the North Pole is that axis to the world. And so everything has to rotate around it. Um, and so... 
why do we put a star on the top of the tree? Well, that's the North Star. That's the star around which everything rotates. And the tree is the axis of the world. The Siberian shamans would say that the, the souls of the great shamans were hatched in nests on that tree. And if you look at the Christmas tree, the Christmas tree is full of gaudy, psychedelic-looking um, ornaments and objects, uh, usually colorful, bright, gratuitously gaudy sometimes, it seems. Uh, but the tree is also full of lights. And um, so, uh, Tom, do you have the images of the previous lectures I've given? I think... Uh, I, we do, and we've been showing some of them as, as you've been talking. Oh, good. <clears throat> and, we, and we only have about four minutes, Stephen, to finish this up. Okay. Well, so Santa Claus, that jolly old elf, uh, is the kind of indwelling spirit of the Christmas shaman. And uh, he is characterized by a bright red crimson outfit uh, and tufts of white. So if you can pull up images, Tom, I don't have... Uh, we have them. We're, we're doing just fine here, Steve. Yep. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, so the, the Amanita muscaria mushroom is a doppelganger for Santa Claus. And as I found out years ago, as I was reading in uh, Psychology and Anthropology at Columbia University, there is a wonderful archaic tradition of eating yellow snow because the hallucinogenic mush mushroom the Amanita muscaria is toxic also, but if a senior shaman eats the mushroom and pees yellow snow, then seven other shamans can eat that snow and get off without getting the toxic. Because his liver is metabolized. Now, isn't it true if a reindeer eat that mushroom when they pee in the snow, their livers have detoxified it also, and now it's just psychedelic snow? There's a big yellow snow eating tradition in the northern hemisphere. The shamans follow the reindeer, the reindeers follow the shamans, and so then that answers the question, flying reindeers? Right. Where do flying reindeer come from? Well, they eat too much yellow snow. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Remarkable. So, so our, our, our Santa tradition is, is uh, psychedelics, almost psilocybin-ish, uh, the Yule log is the is the ancient uh, relighting. When I lived in Germany, uh, we went out into the forest and lit up a tree. And uh, uh, one of my friends there said that uh, they believed that, or the, you know, the local story was that in ancient times, uh, the shaman knew when the shortest day of the year was. They had like their version of Stonehenge, you know, these uh, geographic or geological things. And and so on the shortest day, they would get everybody together at the highest mountain top, and they'd catch on fire the biggest tree they could find. And the next day, as the daylight got longer, everybody would say, oh, he did it again. Let's make him the head guy for another year. Well, anything uh -huh. true to that? Well, I don't know so much about the actual lighting of the tree, although it used to happen if you have a, a fire nearby because these trees are tinder dry and up they go. Mm -hmm. uh, as yeah. we certainly do in California. Yeah. Um, the book I have in front of me, Tom, is a great revelation this year. Uh, it's by Jerry Brown and Julie Brown, his wife, The Psychedelic Gospels, The Secret History of Hallucinogens in Christianity. And mm. uh, the, the story is told in there of Santa Claus and the flying reindeer and the, and the Amanita muscaria. It's just another confirmation of the theory that I've held since I was a uh, a college student. Yeah, and and uh, also you've you've uh, looked at the uh, uh, the is it the Sani people, the the, the people of northern uh, Scandinavia, the indigenous people. The Sami. Sami. That's right. S A M I. And yeah. and this is this is where it seems a lot of the European Santa Claus stuff came from. Yes, it does. Um, uh, they the sleigh the is a reasonable form of transportation in the northern hemisphere where it snows all the time. Right. And so of course and the sleigh is traditionally pulled by a reindeer. Mm -hmm. And if that reindeer happens to be initi uh, initiated into the mysteries of the Amanita muscaria, you could have a, a flight, a short flight perhaps. Yeah. Remarkable stuff. Dr. Stephen Larson, psychologist at the Stone Mountain Counseling Center, uh, former professor of this stuff, founder of the Center for Symbolic Studies, author of numerous books. StoneMountainCenter.com is the website. 
um, the legend of Santa Claus. Stephen, thank you so much for dropping by today. Thank you, Tom, for keeping the images from previous years. You're welcome. Well, thanks, Sean, for that one. She's really good at this. And, really and, and, and uh, you know, uh, love to your family and everybody there. Thanks so much, Stephen. Bye. Bye-bye.